So, hey, everybody, hi. I'm Fraser Cain, publisher of Universe Today, and it's time for your virtual star party for, I don't know, May 12th, 2013 or something. That's the day, yeah. Is it today? Okay. That well, today. that was a lucky guess then. Indeed. We have Let's got tomorrow. more telescopes than we know what to do with, but I think we'll figure that out. Uh, so tonight, we've got a huge team. So we've got, from England, Andrew Dumbledon. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. How's it going? Yeah, super, thanks. <laughs> are, you, are you sure you're not a little sleepy? Sure you... <laughs> Just that... a little bit. I'm yeah, Andrew's in the UK, breakfast. so but he is operating remotely f through the eye telescope set up in, uh, is it New Mexico, this one? New Mexico. New Mexico yeah. yeah, so this is going to be great. So this is going to be a, a really fantastic telescope. I, I'm really excited. Uh, we've got, joining, we haven't seen him for a while, is, is Corey Schmitz, who is operating his new telescope from his new house with his new red light. Or that's... Yeah, sh show us your Stuart look. There you go. <laughs> Just <laughs> like that. So, 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 Corey, what is your new, what's your new setup? <laughs> oh, you're muted. We muted you because you're Echo. Yeah, you, so, you I've got a uh, Vixen 80 millimeter APO refractor um, and a, a new mount that I can do auto guiding with. So, I just learned how to use that in the last three weeks. So we Did, can't brag about you hand guiding yeah. anymore, then, can we? Yeah, that's it. You're going down in style points. So you have to really better I know, today. I know. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, but and and how's the and you also have finished building your new house, or so yes. now you can. Yeah, it's completely I'm done, right? In, yeah, it's completely done. I've been living here for a couple months now, and uh, my skies are a little bit darker than they used to be. Quite a bit darker than they used to be, so That's I can amazing. see stuff in the south now. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, we got so, Gary Ganella in uh, in LA. And you got nice clear skies tonight, Gary. No, oh, you're muted. That was very thoughtful of you to mute yourself, but now we need to talk to you. Sorry, now I need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my seeing's not a hundred percent, but uh, guy got clear skies. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we got John. We got John Kramer, who has been uh, showing us M fifty one for like an hour now. He is. <laughs> he has been so dependable. Yes, finally got some clear skies on a Sunday night here in Middle Tennessee. So I'm real happy about that. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, we got Stuart Foreman, who is uh, still setting up. So I'm not sure if he, if he can even hear us. Yeah, I, I can hear you. I'm, I just muted. Um, hi, I'm uh, just. I'm about 10 minutes away. I'm just focusing right now. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and then we've got, uh, joining us for color commentary, just joined us, David Dickinson. Hey, I just got clouded out, so I just loaded all my gear back in. Oh, really? And I didn't know if you needed any commentary, so I figured I'd, we, I'm, our, I'm awake. So. We, <laughs> we've, got, we've got room. It would be great to have commentary. This lets, lets us slack off, and you and Thad can just go at it with the commentary. It would be great. Speaking of, so we've got Scott Lewis. Hey everyone, how's it going? And we've got Dr. Thad Zabo to bring the science. Good evening. All right, well, let's get started then. So I'm going to start with I'm start with John because I'm sure he's getting a little tired of M51 and wants to uh, <laughs> wants to move on to something else. So uh, now now I'm having we are all just to warn everyone we are all having some problems with our Google Plus and Hangouts this week. It's been they've released a whole bunch of new features and it's been. It's been pretty weird, and so who knows, sort of, I'm not sure, things are kind of uh, freezing for me, so I don't know what, how well this is going to work out. Oh, by the way, um, you, can, uh, you can comment while we do the show, so you can uh, make some comments, you can ask us questions about space and astronomy, or observing, uh, astrophotography, etc., and also you can make some requests, so if, if there's an object that you want to see, and it's in the sky, and someone can reach it, we'll try and uh, pull it up for you. And, and some of the coolest objects that we have never ever seen have come from these requests. So, yes, so by absolutely. all means, if there's an object that you like, that you know of, that we haven't shown, by all means recommend it. So you can make yeah, comments will, on the event page. We'll uh, be brutal to our astronomers and make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we, have them chase the we night sky bidding. for whatever you want. Uh, yeah, and so, um, yeah, you can make your comment on the event page. If you're watching this on Google+, Plus, just in the stream, uh, you can use Twitter, you see the hashtag star party, or if you're um, watching this on, directly on YouTube, you can make a comment there. So, and speaking of Twitter, we now have an official Twitter uh, handle for the Virtual Star Party. So, yeah. any of you guys watching us that are on Twitter, if you go to at the underscore VSP, and that will be us. 
You should make that us. as your handle. I should. Make that I should as your put them all of them. Let's let's change it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, back to John there. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's explain what. Uh, oh, and there's. Oh, and, man, we'll never get started. There's one other thing, uh, which is you you you're putting together a uh, photography contest. Yeah. Scott. So oh, sorry. We, we've been having so many amazing images being, being put into the event page by that people that aren't able to join the virtual star party or are offset by time zone issues. So I went ahead and started a an astrophotography contest to where really the only limitations are that they're your photos, they're not somebody else's. Um, and so just go ahead and put the, the gear that you placed, uh, that you used to capture the image, your telescope, your camera, where it was taken and what the image is of. And this is going until Saturday evening Pacific time. And what I'll be doing with these images, once we have, um, once I've chosen, is I've already looking at them. They're going to be hard to choose which ones are the winners. But we'll be using those for our graphics for not only the the, the banner on top of Google Plus, but also on our event page on Twitter and any of the graphics we use from the videos that we're creating as well for the virtual. Service. And we'll we'll run them on. We'll do sort of a mention on Universe Today, and we'll showcase everyone's yeah. pictures there too. So we'll just we'll post all those pictures there. And anyone out there, plus one, the ones that you like, I will be doing a, a people's choice as well. So if there's there's images that you really really love that you see going into the event page, plus one those, and I'll be taking a look at how many um, gets uploaded on there. It's okay, kind of cool. like Reddit, but for super yeah. nerds. <laughs> uh, so let's let's now let's talk about uh, John John Kramer's uh, M51 here. Finally. Finally. <laughs> that, like, I'm not sure whether you've just been showing a photograph because you have been locked on that for an hour more. No, yeah. it's le it's legit. It's, it's live. It's live. That's <laughs> right. So uh, I'm, I'm using a C8 uh, with that famous, well, not famous, but the uh, uh, modified surveillance camera, the Samsung SCB2000. So this is a pretty... Pretty close to live as you can get. This is about an eight seconds integration of M51 with uh, the. I am even able to make up the connecting uh, arm there to the interacting Galaxy. Uh, I think 94. I think. I'm amazed that like like the exposure time is so short, and yet we can really see the detail on the in the Galaxy. Yeah, that's it, it's a great. Um, set up to do, you know, just just like this, the live, the live feeds. It's great. Well, that's for one thing I've always loved about your setup, especially yeah. since it is a modified security camera. I think it's it's, a, it's really done on the cheap. You're right. The camera is about a hundred <laughs> bucks, and I modified it to have a remote control box now, so I can sit inside for the V or the virtual star parties and do the controls without having to bump the the scope and run in and out. So it, it's pretty nice. Yeah, those are actually ideal, those security cameras. I think Best Buy was selling those a few years back. A lot of amateurs were cleaning them up. <laughs> right, because they're not, they're not selling them anymore, right? Yeah. 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 All right, well, I'm going to move on. I got it when I got it. We got so many objects, so many astronomers. I'm going to move to Andrew's view here. And what have we got, Andrew? Hi, this is uh, Messier 108. So it's uh, an edge-on hmm. hard spiral in uh, Ursa Major. Okay, and this yeah. is nearly, this is right next to the Owl Nebula, is, is is that correct? If you were to pan over just like about 30, yeah, 40 arc if, minutes. Uh, in fact, in this um, telescope, I could probably get both, uh, I'll, I might try that a little bit later, uh, probably okay. both in the same field of view, but uh, yeah, it's pretty close. I mean, yeah, typically we don't get quite a, a good close-up of this galaxy. It's usually paired with the planetary nebula, but you can really see some of the star clouds in here, and it's definitely asymmetrical. There's, there's been some disturbance. There's a grave disturbance in the galaxy. Um, but there's definitely, you know, there's definitely some, something that's disrupted uh, the structure here, and you, you can see definitely this, this knotted material in there. Um, and really, I mean, those knots are tens of thousands of light years across, uh, and, and uh, much more intense star formation going on where it's it's brighter like that. It also looks like there's an intervening star, and this is one thing that's kind of tough to to pick out when you have astro uh, 
astrophotographs is that you know you have these things that are only a few thousand light years away and then the galaxy in the background is tens of millions of light years away and it's like you know well the star is just not you know even anywhere on the same scale it's just as the size of the galaxy behind it it's just so much closer that um you know that it looks like it kind of dominates um in front of the galaxy there cool uh and then Corey, and i'm not seeing Corey's view are other people seeing Corey's view no i'm seeing nope. black black okay. all right <clears throat> all right you've gone oh, I see you've gone dark Corey. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. I see a, a red ball giant. <laughs> There's something in there. The telescope sees something. All right, I'm going to move to Gary's view while Corey gets it's, that organ. Oh. Is that intelligent life? <laughs> Look at this. Wow, Gary, it's, this is oh. M5? M13. 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 Yep. Oh, wow. These globulars all look so similar, but I mean, yeah, yeah but, you know, but that's that's the thing. If you if you could do a nice uniform survey where you had them all at the same altitude, and you took the same length exposure with the same telescope and the same camera on all of them, this would be the second brightest one in the sky. For the northern hemisphere, this is the brightest one. Um, a couple in Sagittarius are also quite brilliant, uh, but again, this this tends to be the one that's uh, Looked at as the great globular cluster. We're looking at about about between half a million and a million stars in this picture, and about thirteen thousand light years away. Yeah, it's definitely one of those objects that you you know you can pick it out in a pair of binoculars for sure. Yeah. Or naked eye if you have good enough skies. If you're yeah. somewhere dark yeah. enough. Very dark yeah. sight. You can yeah, I've seen see it. it up in the Keystone of Hercules. There. I've got yeah, I've got I can get really dark skies where I live. So. Yeah, I can. Either can bad or Gary. No, you guys sure <laughs> can't. Yeah. Even my dark sky site around here is, you know, it's about an hour's drive away. And last night, no, it was there was enough of a light dome that I was just not getting the the usual, um, you know, good contrast that I can can get there typically. They're encroaching on us. All their lights. Yeah, here, here, Were you at a Joshua Tree? <laughs> um, no, out in the Santa Monica Mountains, like okay. w w west of Malibu. Okay. Here in Florida, you got to drive up north about an hour or two away up, uh, along the nature coast up north of Tampa to get really dark skies. The panhandle can be pretty awesome, though. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm going to move to Stewart's view. God, so many objects. This is fantastic. Hey, wait a minute. Is this the same thing? Same thing. He was. He, 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 he got it before I could. Looks like a satellite or a plane trail through there. Uh, yeah. Satellite, I think, actually. Yeah. Alien. Out of the corner. But right corner. I've got the triplet up. Oh, now, the great. one thing that comes through in Stewart's view is that you can see these reddish stars around the the edge of uh, of M13, and the thing is, the globular cluster it's all older stars, and they're if any of them have gone giant, they're going to be red giants. If any of them are still on the main sequence, meaning the the main part of their lives when they're turning hydrogen into helium in their cores, those are going to be you know lower mass G class stars, K class stars, M class stars. So they're, they're generally going to be red, more red or orange colored. So this is a nice kind of true uh, color representation that Stewart has here. That's terrific. Okay, I'm going to move to Corey's. So many objects. This is great. We're going to be going at light speed tonight. Eh, that's, uh -huh. that's okay, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you yeah, do something so that emotes a little bit more than three galaxies? And did you get a satellite going through yours as well, Corey? Yeah, it was a, a blinking one or yeah. something. Must be tumbling then. Mm. Either it's mm -hmm. like an iridium type flasher, or, or it might be more likely it's probably tumbling end over end. I've seen satellites okay. come over. And, yeah, uh, like there and there and there and there. It's so probably, yeah, this is the see, Leo triplet. So it's what? This what is are the galaxies? Sub. Uh, M65, M66, and NGC something. <laughs> three six two eight. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, we've got three spiral galaxies here. The the one over toward the right is edge on, and the other two do present some of their uh, kind of spiral face to us. They're not face on like the the whirlpool that we were looking at earlier, or um, or edge on. They're kind of in between, and there's some gravitational interaction between M65 and 66, the two galaxies over on the the left side, the eyes of the meh face. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah, for those of us, for those of you out there, who have no idea what we're talking about. Why we call it meh is if you uh, if you rotate it uh, clockwise, you'd see that sort of its two eyes and a mouth make it kind of an emoticon. Yeah, about ninety that degrees. <laughs> take your take your laptop, put it on its side, or uh, your yeah. monitor, and there, yeah. there turn be... your desk. Just flip your desk yeah. over. Yeah, you'll see it. Staring at you very mehly. Yeah. So. All right, I'm going to move to John's view. Oh, people, this, this is going to go so fast. Your eyes are just going to see so much tonight. What do we got, John? I'm Another. trying to center up the needle galaxy. Okay, well, I'll, I'll come back to you then. 65. No problem. I'm going to come right. back to you. I can do this now because there's so many objects. Andrew? Is that nice, the tadpole? Uh, no, no. This is, is a, that the hockey stick? I would say, yeah, a disturbed galaxy, again, uh, <laughs> called the Hockey Stick. Um, probably need to orientate it the other way up. I think this is a first. I mean, yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, we've never seen this before. Well, what are you using, Andrew? What's your scope that you got tonight? I'll just uh, switch it in. So this is a remote telescope in New Mexico from the iTelescope network, and it looks a bit like this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, nice. so it's quite Good. a big field of view, um, so I'm quite zoomed yeah. in on this object, but it's it's quite a fast scope at uh, f3.4, um, so it's a 250 millimeter scope. That's uh, quite a nice setup. So, so far between the, the Whirlpool Galaxy and the the hockey stick here, NGC um, 4656, these are catalog, these are galaxies that would appear in the ARP <laughs> catalog of kind of disturbed galaxies or galaxies that look like they're undergoing some sort of merger or collision. So it's a, it's a catalog of peculiar um, galaxies generally where, where you're seeing some sort of collision or, or major disturbance to the, the structure of the galaxy. This is a perturbation, yeah? Yeah, perturbed. yep, it's yeah. definitely pretty perturbed. <laughs> it's not meh at all uh, in this case. Yeah. It is, it is <laughs> yeah. upset with what's happened to it gravitationally. Uh, so we've got a request for NGC 4261, and that's in Virgo. So that okay. should be possible. Yeah, we also have a request for M20, the Trifid. Somebody on the east, let's see... Yeah, I'm not sure if we have anybody who's who's well situated for that right now. That doesn't rise until about two a.m. Yeah. Um, Andrew might. How about you? Andrew, Andrew could if he, but except he's actually oh, that's moved right. himself in, to New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, you're so oh, yeah. right now. <laughs> so you're in the future, um, but in the past at the same time. I love uh, it. Dan Jenkins asks, could someone recommend a good pair of binocs? I've been reading reviews and just can't make up my mind. Yeah. I don't know how much you have to spend, Dan. Yeah, you travel, if you if you have Seven hundred ish dollars, then get a image stabilizing binoculars. I'll go they grab mine. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I use these more than a telescope. Are you using image these, stabilizing? Yes, I've had them for oh. about, I've had them for about fifteen years and they are awesome. But like yeah. they're they're not cheap. I got a chance to play with a pair when we were on the cruise back in December for the first time, and I that's all I can think about. Yeah, they're, they're great if you travel a lot because there's something you can just throw in your suitcase if you're going. I've carried yeah. them down to New Zealand. I've carried them to Australia. So. And I used sure. I tried two. I tried uh, it was like a twelve by. I'm trying to think. It was the smaller one. It was like a ten by twenty five, yeah. yeah. and I could see Saturn. I could see the rings of Saturn. I could see, you know, the bands on Jupiter. I could see the moons of Jupiter. And then the other pair was a, I'm trying to think, the bigger one. The t was it maybe a 25 by 50? These are, these are 15 by 45. I think they make something a little bigger than these now. These are yeah, and that was a, like a $1,700 yeah. pair of binoculars. And then everything was just amazing. And, and when you use the image stabilizing binoculars, you just like, you know, the object's shaking around, you press the button, and it all just yeah. stops. Right. There, yeah, it is, but they're very simple, and they, they, I've had no problems with these. They've, they've worked yeah. down to like 30 below outside, and it's, I can actually see structure on the International Space Station when it passes over. It looks like a little tiny, looks H. like a little tiny Tie Fighter. I always yeah. tell people it looks like a Star Wars Tie Fighter when it comes. Oh, that's cool. Depending on oh, the wow. orientation. Yeah, I if you're not made of I money. Want a pair. <laughs> but if you're not made of money, then you know any seven. These by. are yeah, these are Celestron Skymasters. They're 15 by 70. I got these for 80 bucks US, 80, 90, and they're great. You know, okay. and it's what's great is that it's not like you're going to never 
not use them. You're, you can always just throw them into your truck, go with you wherever you need to go. It's always good for spotting something. When I was in Illinois a few weeks ago, we went and watched the International Space Station go over, and we just pulled those out and were able to look up and wave to Commander Hadfield up there. Yeah. A good pair of 7X50s, I mean, you can't really beat. And a lot of people use those for, like, hunting, and a lot of people have those in their garage just kicking around. Yep. Uh, so, Gary, we've moved on to your picture. What is this? This is M81 and M82. Oh, nice. And uh, I did this at uh, less binning, so I can zoom in a little bit, a little more detail in them. Yeah, you can definitely Big see that. Oh, that's nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is M81. This is a kind of a grand design spiral. And its neighbor, M82, is a starburst galaxy, meaning that the rate of star formation here is enormous. If you look at our Milky Way, which is forming stars at about the rate of one per year, kind of typical for a spiral, M82 is forming stars at a rate of about 100 a year. So that is a ridiculous amount of star formation. And you can see, again, it looks kind of disturbed. It looks like there's stuff kind of flying out of the middle of it. And that's correct. Actually, this, this huge rate of star formation is starting to force the other gas and dust out of it, um, as well as dump it full of energy so it, the, that gas glows um, quite brightly, even as it's getting kind of pushed out of the galaxy by this ridiculous rate of star formation. Uh, Dustin asks again, what brand for binoculars? And I think they're cannons, aren't they? Does anyone else yeah, do the it? Image, the image stabilized ones are cannons. I, I think yeah. they... I think they have the the smaller versions down around three or four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's been Bushnell binoculars are one that are pretty common for the non-stabilized and Swiss yeah. drawn, and everybody everybody makes a pair of seven. Yeah. Um, who's next, John? You're next. What do we got? All right, so I centered up uh, NGC forty five sixty five, the Needle Galaxy. There, uh, you can pretty see the the dust vein going right across the, the middle there, and, and hopefully uh, it's coming through on your screens pretty well, the extent of the uh, the spiral arms themselves being never seen a edge on there. Yep, so it's I mean, pretty faded for me. I'm not if other people, yeah. I'm not but sure you people are able, able to the, see it. The bulge in there as well. Really you do the dust plane, yeah. Yeah. So again, even just this... Soon into the star party, we've seen the Whirlpool galaxy, which is oriented kind of face on. Right now, we've seen um, other galaxies that are kind of tilted, like M65 and M66, like this. And now we're looking at NGC 4565, as well as the other edge on galaxy in the meh Leo mm -hmm. triplet, where it's it's edge on, and so you know you you're barely getting much of a, of a thickness to it at all. You're basically looking at it just just from the side. And so you're just catching the light from the um, the disc right on the, the side of it there. So Fantastic. And Stuart's up with another image now. Yeah, this is another edge on, I believe. This is the Sombrero Galaxy. Yeah. M104, I think? Yeah, that's yep. very distinctive. Uh, M104. I'm excited. Yes. This is the first time I've ever imaged it. I'm really actually really excited about this. Oh, it looks terrific. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, and this one's kind of strange. I mean, it's it's definitely got spiral characteristics to it in that it has a disk, it has a dust lane, but the central region looks far more like an elliptical galaxy, basically just a, a ball of stars where you, it looks like it keeps about the same size because you have a constant inflow of stars falling toward the middle, as well as stars moving out from the center, um, much like the way a globular cluster uh, kind of looks the way that, that it does, is that the stars don't really orbit like they would in the disk of a spiral galaxy, but you more have like infall and outflow and keeps it about the, the same uh, relative radius or diameter. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's great. Good good job on your first take on that one, Stuart. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's one of my favorite images it, it, out there. It's so distinct. Yeah, I, I, I've always the Hubble loved, images of it loved this one. It's, it's really low in the sky for me. It's uh, almost just behind a tree, so I'm, I was lucky to get it. Trees can be chopped down, sir. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to move to Andrew's view, and we've got another. This is Galaxy Night, isn't it? Galaxy Season. Galaxy Season. It is Galaxy oh, wow. Season. Oh, yeah. Andrew. Virgo Cluster and all that. Yeah, this one actually, the one that Andrew has, is in far western Leo. This one's actually starting to kind of uh, 
set for the the sky here in, in where he is in um, New Mexico. The one thing that I love about NGC 2903, it's a barred spiral and it has this same kind of structure to its arms that our own Milky Way does. So if there's anybody in that galaxy looking back at the Milky Way, well one, they're seeing it as it is 35 million years ago because that's uh, this galaxy is 35 million light years away and it's going to be a very similar picture to what we're seeing in this galaxy here is that the the structure of the uh, uh, the, the arms with a barred uh, spiral nucleus the the bar for the nucleus of the galaxy is uh, yeah it would look very much like what our Milky Way would look like to them very cool maybe it's yeah. a giant space mirror we really <laughs> maybe that is. Maybe that's the edge of the observable universe, and we're oh, just seeing ourselves. We're seeing our mirrored back. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Wave that, and... that is an actual conspiracy theory, so don't believe this. <laughs> people do believe that stuff. So wave and see if you wave back in seventy million years. Yeah. Right. Hey, then, you then you'll know. I'll, I'll stick so, around just right. to prove myself right. Absolutely. What kind of what kind of image stabilizing binoculars would you need for that? <laughs> <laughs> Very like gravitational special. lensing binoculars. <laughs> there we go. The park yourself near a, uh, a supermassive black hole in orbit and watch the the rest of time fly by for the rest of the universe. But not you know, binoculars. Yeah, I'm so. down. I'll do it for science. Yeah. For sure. I'm going to move to Gary's view next. Uh, the Owl Nebula. Right on. Okay. And uh, and that planetary. Little little galaxy down here. And M108, which is what we started with. So, um, yeah, so this is the owl, and I like to call it the pussycat galaxy, so from uh, Edward Lear's children's story there. So the You're just going to try and make this stick, aren't you? I you am. Are. I am. <laughs> the, owl, uh, the owl is a, a planetary nebula, so much like later on during star parties in July and August, we'll be featuring the ring nebula and the dumb Dumbbell yeah. Nebula a lot. The owl is in mm -hmm. the same class. It's a star that died, and then the outer layers kind of drifted off into space. And you're like, wait, why doesn't it look like a ring or look like the Dumbbell Nebula? The thing is, it, it depends on the death throes of the star. That sometimes you'll get, you know, one region of gas that came off earlier, and then as the other layers come off and hit it, you get all of these this uh, highly varied structure that can show up in your planetary nebulae. Phil Plate did a, a great article on this. In fact, I think his some of his dissertation work was related to planetaries, if I remember correctly. So, um, so yeah, so this is the remains of a star that's much like our sun that died, and then we have a galaxy just hanging out there in that lower right corner. Um, which chilling. should be hundreds of billions of stars, some of which might die and end up looking like this, but so far away, yeah, you're not you're not going to be able to see them from that kind of distance. So, we were talking about last week too the the whole idea of the the name planetary just comes from the idea of what they visually look like to the early observers. They 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 present a planetary disk. Uh, they look kind of like the there's one actually called the Ghost of Jupiter that actually has the same kind of similar size and in view of Jupiter, but that's the only connection right. between right. what what they're the planet. And there's like the Saturn area. Nebula. Yeah, the yeah. Saturn Nebula yeah. also I guess visible, much better visible during the fall. So don't ask us to show you these things. They're not <laughs> up in the sky right now. In fact, they're they're kind of you know you would have to wait until about four in the morning local time to have a shot at uh, like the um, the Saturn Nebula. I'm not even sure where the ghost of Jupiter is in the sky. I think so. it's an Aquarius, I think. I'm, yeah, I've so, never seen it. So it, the helix, the Saturn, because the Saturn nebula. Because real, guys. That's why. No such thing as I'm being haunted by planetary <laughs> nebulae. <laughs> all the planetary nebulae, all the, de all the dead stars. Maybe the go. zombies, yes, are coming back with all their heavier elements going to do something. Um... BTL743 hopes that this VSP might go further than an hour. I guarantee that it won't. We are barely holding the thing together with yes. duct tape and bailing wire right now. It is, yeah, this technology is I think that's Brian Lefkowitz, and we, we love your enthusiasm. Trust me. I appreciate all yeah. the great comments you give us. Yeah, today is kind of a, a gong show. Emergency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm going to move to, uh, ooh, I'm going to see what... Uh, in, in Let's go see what Stuart has. Um, this, this is, uh, sorry about the slewing in the background, but um, this is part, is this no, this is um, M84, this is part of Mercurian's chain, actually. Right. Okay. And, um, a lot of uh, galaxies. There's a lot of galaxies in this frame. You can see 
five of them pretty easily. At least I can. Uh, but there, um, it is M84 and and various uh, galaxies around. And sorry, my computer just my telescope almost knocked off my computer. I'm trying to get the ghost of Jupiter for you here, but it looks like it's a little low. Oh it's no! The guys of Jupiter now. It's too low. For, it's too low for you, and you're and you're the West Coast, so yeah, no one gonna, else is going to be able to get it. I'm going I'm to give it a try, though. It may be behind a tree. Anyway, Gary, so, do you think that's in your capability? It's in Hydra. I just looked it up. Oh, okay. It'll it'll okay. be too, no, it's behind a tree. It'll be too small for Gary. I'll have to look. It's NGC thirty two forty two. Wow! Cool. So yeah, what we're seeing with um, with Stewart's view here, the part of the Virgo cluster, the two brighter fuzzy things in there, those are two giant elliptical galaxies. Um, M M eighty six, M M eighty four. Can't remember which ones. Then you also have a couple of spirals, one to the left of the two of them, one to the right of the two of them. As you explore this image, you'll find more and more faint little fuzzy things in there, all of which are galaxies that are part of the, the Virgo cluster. The center of the Virgo cluster is about 55 million light years away. So we're looking that far into the past when we're, we're looking at, uh, at these galaxies. This is another one I've always wanted to, to have a look at, and I've never had a chance to, so I'm, I'm excited about that. That's a good deal. That's great. All right, I'm going to move to Andrew's view next. This is I, this is for sure going to be a record for the number of objects that we're we're so. showing tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got except Corey is Corey's. I, I don't know. He's he's probably this is triumph from return. He's probably wrestling yeah. with technology. No, he's just like it's. I graced you guys with my presence. And yeah, I, mean, I brought a ga I brought three galaxies. What more do you need from me? People? Right. Very cool. <laughs> uh, so I so Andrew, what have you got here? Yeah, it's, uh, I've had to brighten this a bit, so it's quite noisy. Um, this is Comet yeah. C two thousand eleven R one McNaught. Oh wow! Cool. Really oh really? Oh wow! Nice. But, uh, I think so you can just about see it. I just put some markers on it in uh, in webcam Max, just so uh, you could see it. I'll erase those in a minute. Where in the sky is this right now? Uh, it's just at the base of uh, Booties or Booties. Oh, okay, so very well placed. Pretty much up all night. Or as, as Fraser yeah. calls it, booties. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, McNaught, I mean, this is, I believe it's Robert McNaught, is um, He's a pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, hmm? comet pretty, hunter. pretty amazing comet hunter. Um, yeah. You know, he's probably picks up, you know, my guess would be a few a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the the number of comet McNaughts there have been, of course, none quite as brilliant as the one in showed up in the beginning of two thousand seven. Yeah. That was actually visible during daylight. So yes, um, but he's this guy that, does it. He's got that southern hemisphere view from down in Australia. There's not as many people hunting from that direction. So right, he doesn't have the competition us northern hemisphere comet hunters have. I I didn't realize that all these McNaughts comets that we're seeing. I thought they were all just the same object. Yes. No. Nope. Yeah, I didn't realize that he was just finding them and getting them he all named after them. Down there. Yeah. There. yeah. I thought it was one. just like the comet was just there. you know dim but still around. But no, I learn something new every time. You're getting smarter it, every day, Fraser. Smarting every, smarter every day. So I mean, yeah, you get the designation from the the name here. So C slash meaning it's a comet, and then the year of discovery, and then they give a, a letter and a number to kind of put it in in order of discovery. So like Pan Stars, for instance, was C dash two two thousand eleven L four. This is C two thousand eleven R one. So it would have been discovered later in the year than uh, than Pan Stars was. Yeah. That's great. I wonder what magnitude uh, that is right now. I want, when will we be able to get pan stars in the, or Ison actually, sorry, in the view? Ison, yeah. Probably later this fall. If it yeah? Performs, if it performs yeah. up to expectations. If it, yeah. if, if it isn't a complete and total disappointment as we all expect it to be. Yeah. Well, so why you start off with meh. You know, meh. Don't get your hopes up, guys. Don't get your hopes up, yeah. We are managing expectations. You know, yeah, pan, kind of... pan stars is still out there. It's just very low on the, the horizon, and I think by this point it's down around magnitude eight, magnitude 8 or 9. Yeah, it's up in Cassiopeia now. So, And there's right. another one, Comet Lemon, I've been following in the morning. That's up in Pegasus, I believe now. But it, it's a binocular comet. It's not naked eye. It's like 6, 7 magnitude. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to move on because uh, there's lots of new objects here. I'm going to move to Gary's view next, which is of a satellite. Yep. Yes, uh, and this is our request of NGC 4261. 
Um, nice. This is it here. It's not a real good object for my field of view. Yeah. But I'm picking out 20 or 30 galaxies in here. Yeah. Amazing. Definitely so there part you of go, the... Sean. You ask for one, he gives you 30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. Galaxies. It's interesting. I can tell that a lot of you guys are getting satellites tonight because it's still uh, right in the dusk. Mm. They're on the West Coast, so they're still all up in that elimination zone. Yep. I'm going to move to John's view next. Um, so switched it up with M3. Three. Globular cluster, yeah. Yeah. This is a good time of year for, for globulars. M13 is starting to come up in the east. M3 and M53 are pretty high overhead. Um, you get a whole bunch of them low to the horizon, like in Centaurus. Um, and then, of course, the thickest region of globular clusters is in Sagittarius. But, um, but yeah, as far as other ones, the ones in Ophiuchus, which would be like M10, M12, M14. Uh, there's M5, which is in Serpent's Caput. Uh, or caput, however you want to say it. Head yeah, of the I snake. Like, I like caput. Yeah. <laughs> caput. So, the dead um, snake. <laughs> but this, uh, is, this is right about the time of year from Florida we can grab Omega Centauri in the evening too, right about May. Oh, nice. It's starting to transit. It gets about 10 or 15 degrees above the horizon here from Tampa. I had it visually yeah. last night over the Pacific. Yeah. I wanted to image it and I was just getting yeah. hell from my computer and imaging yeah. just capture software. But, but it I looks like it. Andrew's got the same object. Yeah. Whoa. Look at that. Very nice. That is really so you, nice, Andrew. These are relics left over from when the galaxy formed. These are um, collections of very old stars, uh, typically on the order of a few tens of thousands up to, for example, for Omega Centauri, more than two million stars that are gravitationally bound together. And they you know, tend to be older stars. These things are stars that are some of the oldest that we know of in the universe, uh, more than 13 billion years old. Well, David was talking about this last week, that for a while there, there was a weird puzzle because these, uh, these globular clusters were, appeared to be older than the universe itself. That yeah, I remember inside. That, yeah, back in the 90s, I remember there was kind of a, a cosmological conundrum that it seemed like the, the globulars were actually older than the universe itself yeah. until they adjusted some of the parameters. And then it was a big problem, too, when Hubble first came up with his, his rate of expansion for the universe, that he came up with a value that's a little bit, uh, was more than twice the accepted value, which gave an age for the universe of 7 billion years. And it was part of why the idea of the Big Bang didn't uh, gain as much traction at the beginning, because it's like, well, all right, if the universe is expanding, you get an age that's younger than a lot of the stuff that we see out there. So we have a much better fix on this now, thanks to the cosmic microwave background studies, thanks to studies of distant supernovae, um, and uh, just better m modeling of processes for star and galaxy formation at this point, they, too. They just tweaked the age of the universe slightly earlier this year, too. With right. There. Uh, we'll tack another 100 million years on. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was a kid with textbooks in the 70s that said the universe was 20 billion years old, plus or minus 10 Fifty percent. So you're like, okay, right, so it's yeah, ten right. billion to thirty billion years old. So we we refined it quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. So when, days, when you have the Hubble constant to what three orders of magnitude is the is, is the most precise that they've ever had? Well, it? there's still some controversy there because I mean, right. the, you when you get it from cosmic microwave background studies, you tend to get lower values. When you you get it from um, supernova studies, you tend to get slightly higher values. So for instance, Planck gave us a value for the Hubble constant of about 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec, but studies of type 1a supernovae give a value around 73. So, I mean, we're much more narrowed in than we were before when you'd have to look at textbooks and say, well, within plus or minus 50 percent. But still, two different methods giving values where the error bars don't overlap, and that's the key thing here, that we know how precisely we can measure with these different <coughs> methods. But the range of those uh, error bars, they don't overlap anymore. So there's there's definitely some something here that has to be sorted out in the science because really there More is there's only research needs to be done. Yes, More scientific research. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna move. Hey, Corey's got a new image for us. Is oh, that... welcome back, Corey. I do. Ooh, the sunflower guy. Star party. 
Yes. Hey, M63, I'm back. Sixty three, right? This is M sixty three. Oh, that's great. Oh, Corey, you've switched to the uh, to the Stuart Foreman method of. Uh, N- not really. Hearing. I kind of half of the Stuart Foreman method. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I didn't touch the image, but I wanted to zoom in on it because it's uh, much smaller than. Yeah. My, my field of view is that. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I wanted to actually show the galaxy itself. Yeah, gorgeous, very tight spiral, but the the arms they give this inc- incredible you know pattern with uh, the extra brightness in the middle, and the longer you expose it, you, you just you know you look at most spirals, you see okay, maybe there's two arms, four arms. You look at this, and it's like whoa, how many does this thing have? <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, longer. Uh, Longer exposure would be able to um, to really show some of that that detail. But again, I mean, even here, you can get get some hint of this. It uh, it always reminds me of like one of those sea stars. Have you ever seen those like those National Geographic videos of the sea star moving around the bottom of the ocean, just and everything yeah. fleeing from it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's it's kind of twisting as it goes. Yeah, yeah, so, and it's got all these. You know, it's got like fifteen arms, and it just as it moves around. Yeah. And whenever so I see this that's one, it reminds the, me that. That's a three-minute exposure. I'm going to try a five and see if I can get more of the arms. Nah, move on to something else. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll yes, still off. be there. You can come I, You back. know what? I want to break a record tonight. That's what yeah. I've decided is going to happen. What, what, what next? Give me something. Uh, something pretty. Black Pointed. Eye Galaxy? Oh. 60, sure. We got 63 here. We can do yeah. 64. Okay. There's, you know, there's the humpback whale galaxy, which is right next to where um, Andrew started us off with the hockey stick. I think we had that last last we had that last week. Last week or two weeks we ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Stuart, um, what do you have? I'm gonna move to it. Yeah, let's go to that. Pretty is sure. it the blue, blue snowball? You keep asking every week. You ask this. It's not, I know it's not it, the snowball. It, but it looks like it because this is only a two minute image. This is the Eskimo. Uh, oh image. right. Yeah, which looks which is the same. It's the same color. It's the same um, size, pretty much. Um, yeah. So it looks exactly like the thing that you're making fun of him. Yeah, yeah. it's all right. It's right, yeah. all right. You know what? I, it wouldn't even be possible. It's it's you know it's another time of the year when we right. see it. So right, exactly. All right. But the Eskimo is going to be fairly low in the west at this time. It's in Gemini, and Gemini is uh, well where the sun will be headed after Taurus. So it's it's going to be quite uh, Actually, pretty darn low in the the west at this by, by this time of year. Corey, is there any way to get uh, Saturn even just to take a picture of it? Not necessarily do a live it'll view. It'll be really it'll be really small because That's of a... my field of view. Oh oh, your field of view is it's just so vast. <laughs> it's big. It's large. Yeah, that is awesome. It's the Gary Ganella problem that you're having. Yeah, there. I know. First yeah. world oh, problems. Yeah. My, my, my telescope is so fast, and it can see so much of the it's sky. Not, see, it's not fast. That's the thing. It's actually slow. It's an f seven point five. It's a it's a refractor, so it's only eighty millimeters of aperture yeah. and a six hundred millimeter focal length. So okay. it's so, relatively slow and so, large. So now that Dustin Yates has already bought his binoculars, he now wants to know what's a cheap telescope that we would suggest. About a thousand dollars. I would say go to. to I would say go to your local star party amateur astronomy yeah. group yeah. first and play with theirs. Find out what you like. Try not to break theirs, but uh, find out what you like, and if, if they'll, you just want they a lot will of be that. more than willing to show you around. Yeah, if you want a lot of aperture, get a Dobsonian. Dobsonian yeah. yeah, like a 10-inch Dobsonian. Yeah. You could probably do it for about $1,000. If you want to it, Corey might be selling his. <laughs> nah. Um, I'm going to modify mine and put it on this mount so I can do F5 with this mount. Oh, you're gonna you're try into a light bucket I, cannon. You're gonna you're gonna attach that Dobsonian to the to the mount. I'm gonna tear it apart first. I'm gonna tear it apart first and have the weight so that I can actually try that. Yes. This is your okay. So if if his mad <laughs> science experiment fails and all he's left with is a bunch of wreckage, then you could buy that from Corey. Um, <laughs> and, and if anyone has a good mount. Corey might be needing one later. <laughs> might be needing a map, one that hasn't been overloaded. Um, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, but then if you, so yeah, Dobsonian, and then I guess if you want like a tracking telescope, and and you can see that Corey went that route. Um, 
you can you can get either from Celestron or Orion something in the thousand dollar range that's going to make you pretty like happy. A, like an eight inch SCT. Yeah, you know, like, like I, an I, eight I, inch. Yeah. I've I've had a lot of scopes come and go over the years, but it seems like I've always hung on to my eight inch SCT. It's uh, it seems like it's just a good versatile overall telescope for just yeah. our parties and throwing in the car and going out in the field. Mm-hmm. And, Got a request for M83. Have we done M83 tonight? I'm losing track of this now. No, we haven't. It would be uh... kind of low in the southeast for most people here. Um, Let's see. I don't know. I don't know what John's view to the south would be. Um, He'd probably be in a better place in the 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 U.S. to get it because I mean it's it's in the tail end of Hydra. Yeah. So the southern southern pinwheel. Okay. Right I'm now, going to go to John's view. M87. Mm. M87, the elliptical galaxy here. Yeah. Virgo A, the giant monster BCG, brightest <laughs> cluster galaxy in the, the Virgo cluster. And they they look so tame. I mean, they, they just look like a big ball. Like right. a bright ball. But the way you get that big ball is from one galaxy eating other galaxies en masse. Yeah. Um, no. so, yeah. Especially something like M87, which is the center of the Virgo cluster, so it gets to feast more than anything else. It's where gravity is going to pull other galaxies to tear them apart, take their material, shed out the gas and dust, and um, you get a bigger elliptical galaxy at the end of it. There we go. Now, I got a question here. This little... (laughs) Is that that I'm capturing by any possibility... The jet? The jet. Oh, interesting. Yes. I think you got it. Because you, you, you said you have a modified security camera, right? Correct. And so it tends to do things a little bit more logarithmically than, I, than linearly. I have, really? I have heard of amateurs catching that. We were talking about that last week, too. I'd never seen but it But amateurs displaying it into the virtual star party? I think that's a first. I think that is a first. first. Yeah. You can you, you can get it more easily, say, with a Malin cam than with a typical CCD. So if this is a security cam that works along the same principles, yes. So we have an active galaxy. It's supermassive black hole at the center is something like, if I remember correctly, six billion times the mass of the, the sun. And as stuff falls into it at an incredible rate, you get these jets shooting out from the supermassive black hole. And what we're seeing here is one of those jets. That jet that you're seeing there, that is as big as the Milky Way galaxy itself. <laughs> That's cool. That's amazing. Well, congratulations, yeah. John. That's Very terrific. nice. Very it nice. Look like a diffraction spike or anything. Wow. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah, trying to it. highlight it there. <laughs> this yeah. this thing it? right here. Check it out. Like a boss over here. Yeah. <laughs> That's... I don't see any new images. So I um. I got the black hat. You're almost ready. Yeah. Okay. Well, while yeah. while we're at it, so uh, it's, Scott, we've got a new Twitter feed yes. for the Ooh. Virtual Star Party. So just remind people, if you want to subscribe at at the underscore VSP. Pretty hard to forget. Yep. And Uh, use the hashtag um, Star Party as well. Yeah. And right now, I'll I'll post, I posted a link already in the current event page, but I'll go ahead and make another share of it. We are doing an astrophotography contest for the rest of this week. So for um, any of our citizen astrophotographers out there that aren't able to jump into the VSP, but do have their own images. And I, I've been loving, over the last few months, they've been really just coming through. It, as long as you took them, submit them, and we're going to have a, a best of type deal going on. We'll be using any of the submissions there for any of the graphics we use for our banners, for the events, for on the Google Plus page itself for the Virtual Star Party, any of our icons. And also some of our um, our intro images for the videos yeah. that we're going to be putting out too. So we really want to, you know, this is your show. We do this for you guys. We we love being able to share the universe with everyone here, and we love that you are able to give back as well. So we want to really highlight all the amazing astrophotography that y'all do. And uh, and we'll definitely promote uh, your work on Universe Today. I have some pull with that website. So yeah, I I heard he's the the publisher there. He's kind of a stickler, but yeah, you know, yeah. We should we should let it happen. My cat just brought a moth into the house. <laughs> I did, uh, get Ghost of Jupiter, but it's pretty boring. Oh really? Oh, let's let's take a look. Yeah. Is that is it? Probably looks like a disc. Yeah, I, that's yeah, it. it looks like that's... the cadaver of Jupiter, not the ghost of Jupiter. Just kind of like laying there. I it still looks like a 
larger object than just a dot, though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Go to the full size image. Oh, and see and one other thing that people should do is you, it, definitely if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll want to subscribe to the Universe Today or to my YouTube channel, so that if you do miss an episode of the Virtual Star Party or Astronomy Cast or some of the other stuff that we're doing, you can see them next time you're you pop in YouTube. So just subscribe to YouTube. All right. A lot of these planetaries, when I'm looking for them visually, when I'm sweeping through the field, is it's, it's something that doesn't pinpoint sharpen right down to a dot like a star. Yeah. If you're, if, right. if you're looking for one and you're kind of focusing it in and out, like on either side of the focus, and it, and it comes down to just a disk like this, you can tell it's a planetary. Uh, Dan Jenkins wants to know, Thad, are you really pulling all this info out of your head or using Google Foo? Um, at this point, out of my head. So, the guy is a beast. They, but what they didn't tell me, he's the prototype for Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just all questions are just sent to Thad. So instead of OK Glass, it's OK Thad. <laughs> yeah. OK Thad. Yeah, Thad is, is a walking, talking uh, encyclopedia of uh, of space. It is true. I've been with Thad in person, and yeah. it's 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 all. I, I still get a kick out of the last time when we were at the Griffith Observatory together. We kind of have followers as we're talking with one another, just geeking out over astronomy. And there's just people following and listening to us like we're giving a tour. Like, go away. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, it's Stuart, what have you got? Some kind of uh, double star. It's exactly what this is. We've been doing a lot of galaxies. and Yeah, you know, for us, boring. For us, exactly. For us wide field refractor guys, galaxies are actually kind of tough because they're really, really little. And... Um, we're all sort of biding our time for the summer. So I, I went to my um, sky safari and said, okay, let me find a double star. And I went to one and it was too close. So I found another one with a big separation. And this is uh, Delta Booties or Bootes. Yeah, or yeah. Boots? Booties. Or booties. Yeah. Booties. Delta Booties. Delta Booties. Delta Booties. Yeah. It's the, it's yeah. the, uh, the, the change in booties. That's yes. what we're actually talking about with Delta this is the change of booties, right? So this is, um, uh, it's a, it's wide separation. Um, looks like 59.3, um, uh, uh, minutes, or arc seconds, I mean. And so. That's fantastic. Um, uh, and it's, my focus, I think, is a little off, so that's why it's not resolving too much as a point, but nevertheless, and I also cropped it really close. Oh, it looks terrific. I, I really like, I mean, they're, they're sort of the same color. Although everything seems to be the same color. Hmm. <laughs> no, I see some red over here. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Unless it's just a stuck pixel, and then never yeah. Mind. I'm gonna move to Gary's view next. Gary, oh M51, look at that. That is my M51. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, that's fabulous. Can you go bigger? That one I did at a four by four, so um. Not gonna be a lot more resolution in there. Resolution as I yeah. go. Yeah. You know, you see, I'm starting to get square stars there. Keep going. That's okay, though. It it comes through because remember that we yeah now we're cooking. Yeah. Look at that. Although I am recording in high def on my end, so we'll play with it later. Yeah. But but it's nice. And it's just remember, like when it goes through the hangout and then out to people, there's like a loss in resolution. Yeah. So even though it looks quite nice on your screen, it doesn't look quite as nice as it's put out the the next level. So to zoom in like this actually is is really great. I noticed oh. rewatching them on YouTube. Yeah, they look a little. Uh, yeah, we always got to think about all of the steps that things go through. So, yeah, I'm going to move to Andrew's view next. The humpback whale. Yes. NG, NGC four six three one. I was shooting this last night, and now I look at Andrew's shot, and I don't even want to post mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is gorgeous. This wow. This is really good. Nice detail uh, on all this gas. BTL743, it's a moth, a moth, like a little flying, you know, flying bug, like a night butterfly, yeah, not a mop. The, it's the humpback whale, and then you've got, you know, a calf or something that's swimming along with it. Right. right? So, but again, all these disturbed galaxies, it's like, I don't know, if there was a galaxy psychiatrist, it would have a field day with everything <laughs> we've looked at tonight. Well, so. It needed a little bit more lithium than the hydrogen and the helium. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> oh, wah. oh, oh, ba doom boom. <laughs> but this is actually this is right next to the hockey stick galaxy in the in the yeah. sky. I'm not sure if they're actually interacting with each other. Although, again, considering um, the very uneven asymmetrical distribution in each of them, I wouldn't surprise me to know that they were um, to, to find out that they were so interacting. Very cool. Uh, John, 
Is that the Black Eye Galaxy? What is that? No, there was a request earlier I thought I heard about M83. I've got the Black Eye Galaxy up right now. Oh, M83. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so this it's, is the southern pinwheel. Yeah. You definitely have the, the, the center parts looking okay, and every once in a while the, the bar, it's another barred spiral, and the bar shows up with a little bit of the, the detail in the arms. This is very, it's a very low um, object that's very low in the sky for most of the U.S. Yeah. So it's not, um, you know, not surprising that it's it's a little bit uh, faded out because, I mean, you got to look through a lot of atmosphere for most of the U.S. to see it. If we could get some southern hemisphere observers, this thing would be way up in the sky. So, Corey. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, sweet. That's amazing. <laughs> There we go. I, I suppose you're welcome back. I mean, okay. we'll, we'll let you Fine. come back. <laughs> that is oh, terrific. Fantastic, dude. So we got another spiral galaxy here, and it's like, what the heck happened? Did it eat another galaxy, and this is just a kind of smear of dust across it? That's well, I think a, a disturbed galaxy came by and got a little disgruntled and punched it. And in punched it in the nucleus. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. So... Wow, that's amazing. Wow. That is terrific. Yeah, do, by all oh, means, feel go. free to zoom yes. in. Yep. That's Very phenomenal. nice. This is Black Eye Galaxy he's got? Yeah. 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 Cool. That's not the Black Eyed P Galaxy. Uh, Black -eyed. <laughs> it really has been Galaxy yeah. Night. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, Gary. This is M63. Which is another galaxy. I'll zoom in on that a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely a lot smaller though for your field of view, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's not. Uh, like yeah, keep you going. Start to see a little of the detail. Yeah, a whole bit of yeah. structure. Yeah. So again, the sunflower galaxy again. So. And this is what I mean. The nucleus is definitely kind of overwhelming the the view from the the spiral arms. So, really tricky thing to try um, bringing into the the star party. I appreciate that you guys have tried, but it's it's the the contrast that you need to really get to see the the sunflower kind of structure on it is. Uh, well, yeah, I'll Google some image, images of M sixty three if you if you um, want to see it at a better resolution than we can provide at the, yeah. the star party. Nothing against you guys bringing it up. I mean, this is, <laughs> it's, it's awesome to be able to shoot this thing. Yeah, it's just with um with a longer exposure and a lot more stacking. There's an incredible amount of detail in this yeah. galaxy. All right, well, we're kind of nearing the the hour, and so I think we'll start to wrap things up. But uh, and I can see that Stuart's got one more object here, so if people have any last objects, they can put them up. What is it, Stuart? Uh, this is uh, Alcor and Mizor. And Mizar. Oh. Mm. And um, Mizar is on the top. And again, I think my focus is slightly off. It, Mizar actually itself is a double. Yeah, you can see a lump on it. In, in, my, um, in my backyard EOS, I could actually s resolve it. But for some reason, it's you know it didn't resolve when it, when it took the pictures. And then Alcor is on the bottom there. Yeah. That's a thermal focus. Yeah. That's, That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I don't think we've had it in the virtual star party yet. I think so. I think we have. Maybe like a year well, ago, but I haven't yeah, seen I think, it recently. And I think so. it was Stuart that did it anyway. So, you know, yeah. It's better. Uh, I mean, his, he's, he, we always send him after Alberio, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another couple of months. Another couple of months. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. Well, thanks, everybody. That was, uh, is Gary got, no, no okay. And nope. John, nope. Okay, we're all, we're all back to, uh, back to humans now. So, <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. So, Andrew, thank you very much. And then you, you were able to make the tech, the tech work a lot uh, better for you this this yeah. week. Yes, it was great this morning. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, and Corey, thank you very much. Great to have you back in the Star Party. I'm yes, it's, sir. It's, I'm really glad you're able to make it and join us. And wow, like those those images you're pulling out. Of, I want one of those, one of those <laughs> telescopes. I think I, I think I found the telescope I want. I wanted Stuart's telescope, but now I think I want yours. His is cheaper. <laughs> That's why I want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, David, thanks again. Sorry, right, I couldn't bring Saturn. Hopefully next week we'll be able to do Saturn and the moon, too. So oh, that'd be great. The moon's going to be coming back to yeah. you. Yeah. Gary Ganella, thanks as always. Thanks. Thrilled to do it. Uh, the galaxy known as John Kramer. Thanks, John. <laughs> hey, thank you. And Scott, thanks again. Not a problem. And Stuart, or the... The double double, hey, Nona Stewart. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll put myself back on real quick. Yeah. Wait, the double it. cream, double sugar in your coffee, Stuart Foreman. 
There he is. <laughs> and Dr. Thad Zabel, thank you very much for bringing the bringing the science. So my pleasure. Uh, next up is going to be Astronomy Cast tomorrow at noon, and then we will be doing I think Learning Space on I always forget is it Wednesdays, and then uh, we've got the the Planetary Weekly Space Society? Hangout on Friday. Yeah, Weekly yeah. Space Hangout on Friday. And yeah. Then... Come for a circle. Back and here. if you haven't already, remember, follow at the <laughs> underscore VSP on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel here. Um, submit your photos for Submit the your photos, and we will and put them into, into the contest. That would be great. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging out. And so we're going to be pushing to 9 o'clock for next week for sure because we, <laughs> we thought it was going to be at 30, but it was way too early to start. Yeah, I'll be so setting up the event tonight to yeah. it out. So awesome. We'll be starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Right. <laughs> All right. Might as well get up and start working. Great, Andrew. It's going to be like yeah. breakfast for you at that point. Yeah, it'll be breakfast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Another four weeks or so before it starts going the other way. Yeah. All right.